بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا قوا أنفسكم أهليكم نارا وقودها الناس والحجارة عليها ملائكة غلاذ شداد لا يعصون الله ما أمرهم ويفعلون ما يؤمرون my dear respected and most honorable elders, beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. First of all, we, we humbly begin by, by thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by glorifying and praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for once again enabling us with this unique and wonderful opportunity to congregate, uh, to come together, to worship Him, to glorify Him. Uh, and, and ultimately to send salutations upon his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and we're extremely thankful we're grateful for these opportunities that are blessed to us uh, and, and our families um last week i mentioned that today uh, last week i spoke about the uh, the importance of um the elderly the imp- and the wisdom uh, and the guidance of our parents uh, in our lives and how important it is to have them in our lives and how important it is for us to acknowledge their um uh, their knowledge their their wisdom uh, and 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 their um you know their place in our existence and and i spoke about how um uh, how parents have an enormous uh, leverage in terms of of what they teach their children and what what they go on and the wisdom that they impart upon their children so they've got an enormous responsibility and we have an enormous uh, amount of respect and honor for it. Uh, today I want to talk about, and I mentioned last week that we would be discussing this week, we want to talk about raising children. Um, how, uh, just like you know, parents uh, uh, deserve our honor and they deserve our respect, it's important for parents also, for us as parents to understand that we hold an enormous leverage over our children and we've got a responsibility and duty towards them uh, in what we teach them, how uh, they grow up as, as adults, the impact that we have upon their lives. Um, we have a duty to steer, steer them in the right way, uh, to guide them uh, on this path to follow the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet In the verse that I just quoted before you, and this is, this is a verse of the Qur'an that, that each and every one of us uh, needs to understand. It's a verse of the Qur'an that each and every one of us um, must uh, appreciate um, and understand that we are involved in this, that we are a part of this. Allah Azza wa Jalla says in the Qur'an in Surah Al-Tahreem verse, uh, 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 verse 6 يَا amanu, O oh you who believe قُوْ أَنفُسَكُمْ وَأَهْلِيكُمْ nara. Save yourselves and your families from the fire. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on to say that fire, which is وَقُودُهَا النَّاسُ وَالْحِجَارَةِ um, uh, whose fuel is, is men, is, is people and, and stones. عَلَيْهَا مَلَائِكَةٌ غِلَاذٌ شِدَادٌ لَا يَأْسُونَ اللَّهَ مَا أَمَرَهُمْ وَيَفْعَلُونَ مَا يُؤْمَرُونَ Over which uh, appointed uh, angels uh, uh, who are stern and, uh, and severe, who do not disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He commands them to do whatever they are commanded to do. Um, so in this verse of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making it clear, very clear, that we have a duty and an obligation to not only protect ourselves, but also to protect our families, to protect um, our children uh, from the fire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not only going to ask us, what did you do? You know, I was talking to someone the other day and I said, you know, if, you, um, if within your own family, everybody was, was, was sinning, um, or was involved in, 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 in transgression, was involved in sin, and you were this perfect being. You, you were this individual who continually worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You never did anything wrong. You had a high status with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On Yom Al-Qiyamah, just because you were that way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to give you a free pass. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to ask you, you know, oh, fine, you were guided. You know, you, you, uh, you took the right measures, uh, you, you made the right decisions, but what did you do in order to bring your family back onto the right path? What did you do in order to, uh, uh, to make them 
aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What did you do in order to, to make them understand uh, the, the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And if you didn't, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will find you um, uh, reproachable for that. Uh, so it's important for us to understand that, that we have this duty uh, to, to protect not only ourselves, but to protect our family members too. Um, children have the right uh, to be raised as responsible Muslim adults and parents must ensure that right uh, appropriately. Um, we must be uh, uh, conscious and, and take an active role in guiding our children and our families to the path of Iman. Um, this is our responsibility. Not to think that you know it's only our duty and we only have to focus on ourselves and not anybody else. No. Um, Allah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa reports in a hadith related to us by Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma where he says kullukum ra'in wa kullukum mas'ulun an ra'iyatih each and every one of you is a ra' each and every one of you is a shepherd and uh, each and every one of you is responsible for his uh, uh, for his flock fal amiru ra'in wa huwa mas'ul and uh, um, uh, the, the amir the leader he is also a shepherd and he's responsible. وَرَجْلُ رَائِنْ عَلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ وَهُوَ مَسْؤُولٌ And a man, he is responsible um, for, his, for his house. Uh, he's the leader of his house. He's a shepherd of his house. He's responsible. وَالْمَرْأَةُ رَائِيَةٌ عَلَىٰ بَيْتِ زَوْجِهَا وَهِيَ مَسْؤُولَ And a woman, um, she's the shepherd of the house of her husband. And she's also responsible Allah kullukum ra'in wa kullukum mas'ulun an ra'iyati and, and, and certainly each and every one of you is a shepherd and you're all responsible for your flock. So all of us, we have a responsibility. There are people under our tutelage. There are people who, um, who we have an influence over and we're responsible for them. We're responsible for their deeds, their actions. We're responsible for how well they behave or... Uh, you know how badly they behave we've got a duty towards them um, number one is our family and it's important that we raise them we raise them in the right way um, and and there are a few critical areas that I want to go through very quickly in terms of raising our children into responsible Muslim adults the very first thing that we start off with um, uh, in, in Islam when when you, when you have a child and and, and uh, for those of you who do have children and those of you who don't, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you the best of children. Um, the first thing that we do is we give our child a good name. right? Uh, parents have a responsibility to provide the child with a good name that is in accordance with the Islamic traditions. In a narration, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that the best thing that uh, a man can give to his child is good name and good manners. These are the best things that you can provide to your child. Um, nowadays, you know, uh, even, even that is somewhere where we're lacking, right? You know, we're naming our children after people who we're inspired by, right? Uh, you know, we're naming our children after things that, you know, just rhyme um, or, or names that sound nice or are the flavor of the day um, as opposed to, to, to naming our children after those individuals who, 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 who were inspirational, um, uh, and, and, and naming them after, uh, after those people who, uh, who were named uh, appropriately and correctly. Um, uh, for example, the, the Sahaba of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, naming them after the Sahaba, naming them after noble individuals. That's something great because that's, you want them to be like them. If I name my child, my child Abu Bakr, um, I hope that my child would be a semblance of, of Abu Bakr and he would he would follow in the footsteps of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala an. So it's important that we name give them the right name. So you know the start has to be appropriate. If you're naming them, if you're naming your child right from the beginning after a, a non Muslim who, who 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 is some who is you know uh, an inspiration to you in in uh, in your life then you know then you're going to uh, of course uh, find that your child is going to um, have that uh, that upbringing from the beginning. It's not he's not going to be he or she is not going to be um, what you expect uh, him or he or she to become. Um, the second thing is after you provide them with a good name and and, and you give them that, that that start in life is to give them that unconditional love that that relationship that relationship of of tarbiyah for the children 
it has to be founded on unconditional love um, because this is the the security for spiritual growth this is spiritual growth can only come when when uh, when a, a parent has raised that child in 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 the appropriate way and uh, and the appropriate way must be followed with with unconditional love just as you know the baby bird it, uh, you know uh, to, to it's like str- when a baby bird stretches his, his wings for the first time to fly out of its nest it knows that its loving parent is alongside it in exactly the same way the first steps that our children take they know that we're there for them to catch them whenever they fall that unconditional love that has to be there um this uh, ultimately requires frequent expressions of love um frequent exp- expressions of of affection um from parents towards the children the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is a prime example of this he never held back his love for uh, for children he never held back his love for for his children and his grandchildren say imam al hasan and imam al hussein radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma and he never held back his love for any other children orphan children that he would find he would always um express his his love and affection for them he would pick up children in his arms he would play with them he would kiss them frequently expressing his love for them um there's in fact narrations of of uh, of companions on the authority of sayyidna abu hurair radiyallahu ta'ala an there was a man um his name was uh, uh, al aqra ibn habis and al aqra was one of those macho uh, you know uh, uh, an individual you know uh, full of machismo you know um, a, a man's man um and uh, he 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 once saw the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam pick up uh, al hasan ibn ali radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma um his grandson and he picks him up and then then he 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 kisses him and then he places him on the ground and 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 he and aqra is is a witness to this beautiful sight which is no doubt a beautiful sight and um uh he he says ya rasulullah i i have 10 children and i've never kissed a single one of them and and there are two narrations um where the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave two different responses one is man la yarhamu la yurham he who does not show mercy will not be shown any mercy as in he will not be shown any mercy by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, another is the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to him that what can i do if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has removed uh, mercy from your heart um so parents as parents we have that obligation to show love and mercy towards our children and that love and that mercy has to be unconditional this is ultimately what helps the children develop normally um and uh, and have stable personalities you know you, regularly on netflix you see your documentaries of um of serial killers and 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 psychos and 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 you know all of these these kind of individuals uh, who who are completely unstable and a, a lot of the time you'll see nine times out of 10 that these individuals were often abused as 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 children they weren't given the appropriate guidance as children and it affected their psyche affected their mentality and that's something that you'll find is consistent in people who you see today who are unstable or who have uh, you know um uh, uh, psychological any type of psychological ailments they weren't raised a lot of the time not all the time sometimes they have genuine psychological problems due to other reasons but sometimes it's due to their the um the way they were raised um and the fact that they weren't given any unconditional love um they were not able to develop normally because they lived in a toxic environment so it's important for us if we want our children to uh, to to be the best versions of themselves to give them that unconditional love from the beginning uh, give your children importance give them importance affirm their feelings and their experiences the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he would never deny he would never belittle um and he would never ignore a child's feelings um and i've mentioned this story before and it's a beautiful story uh, once the younger brother of sayyidna anas ibn malik sayyidna anas ibn malik was that companion who spent the entirety of 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 his youth in the company of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was a, he was a, he was someone who was regarded as anas ibn malik khadimi rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam the servant of the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam anas had a younger brother his name was abu umair now abu umair uh, newly weaned um, as a toddler um, very young is reported he was 2 or 3 3 years old at the time um, he had this uh, this small bird this this nughair 
this nightingale that he used to uh, to to play with. Um, and one day, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam happened upon um, uh, Anas and Abu Umair, and he saw that Abu Umair was crying. He was he was distressed. He was upset, um, and he questioned uh, Anas and others around him. What's wrong with Abu Umair? What's happened? Why is he so uh, so upset? And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is informed that, that that nightingale, that bird, that pet that uh, Abu Umair had, uh, that's died or it's passed away. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, instead of going to to uh, Abu Umair and doing something that perhaps we would, oh Abu Umair, it's okay, it's only a bird. I'll get you a new one. Or oh, there's plenty more birds. Uh, out there, it's okay, it's not a problem. The Prophet ﷺ understood and appreciated the fact that he had this attachment to this bird. And the Prophet ﷺ, he, he sat down with Abu Umair and he said, Ya Abu Umair, ma fa'ala uh, Oh Abu Umair, what has the Nughair done? As in, why has the, has the Nughair left us? The Prophet ﷺ, he affirmed the feelings of this child. He didn't, he didn't dis, he, he, he wasn't dismissive of them. He affirmed those feelings and he sat down and he appreciated them um, and, and, and he sympathized, he empathized with people. And the Prophet ﷺ was like that. He, he gave the attention to everybody around him. Whenever they had something to say to him, the Prophet ﷺ would listen intently. He would never turn his face away from them. This, this is a famous hadith in um, it's reported uh, in, in the Shama'il where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa when he would speak to someone he would turn their entire body to face them and he sallallahu alayhi wa wouldn't just turn his face in that direction he would turn his entire body in that direction uh, respecting um, their views and, 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 and their opinions um, uh, you know in, there's, there's many many uh, other hadith there's a hadith of that man of that young child sorry um, uh, Sahil ibn Sa'ad radiallahu ta'ala and he reports that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was brought a cup of of, of, uh, of some drink and, and he sallallahu alayhi wa he he drank from it um, and after drinking from that cup as was customary the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa would give that cup to the person who is uh, who is sitting on his right hand side and then he would give it to the person who was sitting on his right until it went all the way around and, and, and this time when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he looked towards his, his right, uh, he saw a young child sitting there. And towards his left was an elderly gentleman, someone who was older. So um, uh, he turned to, to the child on his right hand side and he said, look, this cup is your right because you're sitting on my right hand side. Um, however, there's an elderly gentleman who's sitting on the left over here. Uh, with your permission, can I give this cup to that individual? Now, subhanallah, this is the Prophet of Allah. This is uh, the uh, afdalul khalq, the best of Allah's creation. And he's seeking permission from a child. Uh, and, and subhanallah, the child's response, the child says, No, Ya Rasulullah, I don't give you permission to give this to that individual. Uh, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa instead of saying what we would say, what an insolent child this is, here you go and give it to the, to the elderly gentleman. The Prophet ﷺ said, here you go then, you know, this is your right. And, and he took that, that cup and he found the place where the Prophet ﷺ had placed his blessed lips. And, and he placed his blessed lips on, he, he placed his lips on, 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 on that area, on that part of, of the utensil and he drank from it. And after drinking from it, he, he, he took the cup and he went and he gave it to the elderly gentleman. And then he explained his actions to the Prophet ﷺ. He said, Ya Rasulullah, I'm not going to give my share of blessings away to anybody else. Um, that, that place um, uh, where the Prophet ﷺ placed his lips, he wanted his lips to, to, to be placed on that, on that cup. Um, and and this, is, this just signifies the, um, the relationship that the Prophet ﷺ had with his companions, that they felt this level of attachment towards him they felt um, uh, you know this this level of affection towards the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam and so it's important for us to to realize that also it's important for us to know um, that we we um, uh, uh, we have to um, affirm uh, children's feelings we have to ensure that our children are raised in in, in, in an appropriate way they're raised in the right way 
Um, and uh, we affirm their feelings. We don't, we're not dismissive of them. We listen to them. We talk to them. And part of that responsibility of talking um, uh, and uh, discussing things with them is, is to teach them uh, some, uh, you know, some things which uh, ultimately is, is a man. Uh, teach them uh, that which, which is going to benefit them uh, both in this world and, and in the Akhirah. Part of the responsibility that, that parents have towards their children is, is protecting them from things that may lead to corruption or may have, have a negative impact on their morality. Um, we look today and we live in an, in an environment where new rules are coming into schools that children as young as four and five years old are going to be taught um, uh, sex education and, and, and relationships that promote the LG, LGBTQ agenda. Uh, and, and this is, this is con- confusing for anyone who's, who's grown, um, never mind a child of uh, you know, four or five years old. Um, and, and, and that's done so, to make them socially aware. However, within our tradition, that's something which is regarded as unnecessary and unacceptable, especially um, with young children. Um, and, and, and the consequences of, of early sex education, especially the way it's taught in schools, um, you know, it, it, where, where children are taught uh, to have safe sex from a very young age, um, results in what you see. In, in the US alone, you have one, over one million teenage pregnancies a year. That's, that, that's nearly 3,000 teenage pregnancies uh, a day. Um, a half of, of those one million children end up not completing their education and the other half um, uh, uh, you know, end up on, on welfare in America. And we're not that better, we're not that much better here in the UK. 80% of children raised by, by, by single mothers um, because uh, kids in, in sex education are not taught about that responsibility. Um, the Satanist, uh, uh, you know, uh, paganist agenda promoted like, by the likes of Alistair Crowley um, who said, you know, whose famous motto was do what thou wilt, um, do whatever you want. That's prevalent in today's society that, that people are encouraged to, to express themselves, uh, whether that be express themselves in terms of their critical thinking, uh, which we don't have a problem with that, but to, be, to express themselves um, and, and, and do whatever they want with their bodies, that's something which is, uh, which is forbidden in Islam. Um, and it's important that we not let our cultural baggage stop us or make us shy from discussing these things with our children. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he spoke um, about uh, within with, within those contexts. He he spoke about sexuality, um, and it's important that we find ways in order to to engage with 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 the youth in order to talk to them about these sensitive issues we it's not we, we can't brush them under the carpet we can't expect and somebody else to take that responsibility it's our responsibility to do that our children um are, are not learning from from home or from their masajid or from their teachers their imams uh, they're learning in school and everything that they're learning about sexuality uh, is is from school and it's important that we provide them with with the alternative because what they're being taught at times is going to be unhealthy and there's 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 so many other things it's important to uh, to inculcate the concept of la ilaha illallah from a, a very young age um teach them about your religion and the only way that you can teach them about uh, about your religion is to is for you to be perfect um representatives and manifestations of your religion in order for them uh, to follow it teach them about allah Help them understand Allah through His creation, um, and they too will then learn about the world as well as learn about the one who created it, um, thereby becoming better citizens of the world. Teach them their faith. Pray yourself. Teach them to pray. Um, observe shukr. Um, avoid sin. Refrain from feeding them haram food. Um, uh, because if you're going to, to fill them up with haram, then you're, you can only expect them to be involved in haram act. Regular recitation of the Quran, uh, uh, regular dhikr, adhkar, uh, remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inculcate the concept of, 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 of love for the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from a young age. Reading the rood yourself, sending salutations upon the Messenger, encouraging them to send salutations upon the Messenger. Teach them why we send salutations. Not just tell them this is how you perform, uh, this is how you send salutations. No, teach them why we do it. 
why it's important to honor the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam um you know uh it's important that we we have that relationship with them um may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me and you the tawfiq and the ability to act upon the teachings of the quran um the noble sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam there were so many more other things that i wanted to, to discuss you know in terms of treating our children fairly all of them uh, whether that be boys and girls don't treat your daughters unfairly or regard them as inferior and um, the rights of the children to a proper education and upbringing um, help them choose the right role models nowadays children have role models that are non-muslims um, and that are taking them completely in the opposite direction uh, it's important for them for, for us to provide them with the right role models in order for them to succeed both in this life and in the uh, and in the hereafter inshallah um, we can discuss that uh, at a later date um, we pray that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, grant our uh, um, grant us the proper um, understanding uh, of how we must be raising our children and and grant our children um, uh, guidance both in this world and in the hereafter inshallah just a quick announcement that um, I think uh, there's a few things that I wanted to to discuss in uh, in other subjects. Inshallah, we'll have um, uh, 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 a talk probably uh, on on Monday or Tuesday next week with regards to certain cultures that we have in our society um, and 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 the prevalence of uh, of the of them, especially in relation to how we must converse, um, how we must uh, respect and honor the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Um, you know uh, this this uh, we'll talk about this modern day not not culture as well um and how we must appropriately address the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam both when we're praising him and when we're talking about him sallallahu alayhi wasalam um and we're learning and and and, and teaching about him uh, his life so uh, inshallah we'll do that over the next week please do continue to remember us in your duas um do remember those within our communities who are unwell um those who are suffering may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them the best of uh, of cures and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alleviate their pain and their suffering wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh